Hello. I'm taking the time to answer a few questions that I've been asked over the years, which is, what's the difference between a mortgage-backed security and a CDO, a collateralized debt obligation? Now, I actually made a video about this about six years ago, and the reason why I'm doing it again is because at the time I did it with a microphone that was not of the highest quality, so the audio was kind of questionable. So basically, I'm doing it again because I wanted to have just a better quality audio. So here it is. A mortgage-backed security is an example of a class of assets called, or financial assets called, a derivative. Now, a derivative is simply an asset that derives its value from another asset. So in the case of mortgage-backed securities, or MBSs, they derive their value from a pool of customer loans. Now, mortgage-backed securities are part of a class of assets called asset-backed securities. So there's derivatives, then a type of derivative is an asset-backed security, and a type of asset-backed security is a MBS. Now, some asset-backed securities are backed by credit card debt or auto loans. And as the name implies, a mortgage-backed security, or MBS, are securities backed by mortgages. Now, how did mortgage-backed securities uh, come about? How, why were they invented? Well, we got to go back to how banks made money. Banks made money by making loans. And they made loans for people to buy homes. And these loans were called mortgages. Now, these were safe and profitable for the banks. But one of the downsides of these types of loans was they were relatively illiquid. Now, what does that mean? That simply means that it took a long time for the bank to realize the full value of that particular transaction. Uh, how long? Well, a typical duration for a home loan was 30 years. So it took a bank 30 years uh, before they could actually see the full benefit from their loan. And banks were limited to how many loans they can make based upon a fraction of their deposits. Well, somebody got an idea, and the, the idea was, let's say an investment bank, let's say like uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. These were investment banks a while back. Some of them are no longer with us. But they, someone got an idea, what if we buy the mortgages from the banks. So we buy these mortgages from the banks. Now, from the bank's point of view, they could sell these mortgages from a profit, and now they're off their books. Now they're free to make more loans. Now, what the investment bank gets out of this is they now have a bunch of assets that are generating uh, income, a rather steady stream of income. The income is basically the mor monthly mortgage payments uh, the homeowners are making. And what the investment bank says, we'll give investors a piece of this action. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to create something called a special purpose entity. This is basically a shell company. It's just a holding company. Something to hold a new type of asset. What the investment bank did is they transferred these mortgages into the special purpose entity, the SPE. And now the mortgages are bundled and controlled by a shell company. Now the shell company can now issue stock that gives the holders of those shares a share of the revenue that's being generated by these mortgages. And this is what we call a mortgage-backed security. It's basically a way to make money off a pool of mortgages. And this was great, but there's a bit of a problem. The problem is, how could you estimate the risk of this mortgage-backed security? It's difficult because um, there, there could be thousands of these mortgages, and how would you, as an investor, uh, basically uh, measure the creditworthiness of e each individual homeowner? You can't. So the investment banks 
had an idea. What we'll do is we will create classes of mortgage-backed securities. One class is going to be called the senior class. And sometimes they're called tranches. A tranche is just a French word for a grouping. So the senior tranche was the tranche that had uh, that got paid first. Because remember, there is a lot of money coming into this uh, mortgage-backed security. Now, if some of those mortgages are defaulted on, there's still money coming in. But what we're saying is the senior tranche will be paid first. So even if there's losses, they may not experience any sort of reduction in money coming in because they get paid first. After the senior tranche is paid in full, if there's more money coming in, the second tier or the mezzanine tranche will be paid. Finally, after the mezzanine tranche is made whole, if any more money is coming in, the third class or tranche is paid, and that's the equity tranche. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to order these uh, investors in priority, which meant that you, we could bring in credit rating agencies like Standard & Poor's, Moody's, Fitch, and what they can do is say, since the senior tranche will be paid first, even though there may be some defaults, they're the safest. So what we'll do is we'll give them a the, our highest rating, a AAA. And then, of course, the, senior, the mezzanine tranche, they're going to get paid after the uh, senior tranche, and they're a little more risky, but still pretty rock solid. We'll give them a AA. And then finally, the equity tranche, they're the riskiest, so we'll give them the lowest credit rating, which let's say is a, a B rating. Now, of course, since the equity tranche has the greatest risk, they promise the highest return, which let's, say, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's 10%. And the mezzanine, since it's a safer bet, they don't have to promise a high, as high a return. So let's say they promise a 6% return. And then finally, the senior tranche, the safest, is the lowest return. And basically, these were very popular. A lot of people bought these. They were considered to be relatively safe investments, uh, and um, they provided a good return for the buyers of these securities. But then a rather creative financial scientist, let's say, was focusing his or her attention on the equity tranche, the bottom tier. Let's focus on that. And he was looking at, let's say, that pitiful B rating. Now, what that meant, that B rating meant that some investors, some institutional investors, let's say like a, a money market fund or a, uh, a credit union, they couldn't buy this type of asset because of its, because of its, of its low credit rating. Uh, there are some investment funds that are obligated to buy what they call investment grade assets, which is, let's say, AAA rated. So because it was rated B, it was limited to who could buy it. So what they said, well, you know, we grouped mortgages and converted them into tranches. And, and those tranches were then rated as safe, kind of safe, and not so safe. Why couldn't we do the same thing with the equity tranches of multiple mortgage-backed securities? So let's say we take a number of mortgage-backed securities and we look at their equity tranche. So right here, I have five, one, two, three, four, five mortgage-backed securities. These are separate MBSs. What if I took the equity tranche of each MBS and then I group them by class? I said, okay, um, we'll create a new asset that has all of these equity tranche MBSs and the top tranche is going to be the senior tranche and they would get paid first just like in the mortgage-backed security, then we would have a mezzanine tranche and we have an equity tranche. And this is what we call a CDO. A collateralized debt obligation is simply a grouping of 
portions of mortgage-backed securities. And to add a little marketing pizzazz, they even gave this, some CDOs gave the senior tranche a new name. They called it Super Senior. Can you believe that? Now, please understand what this is the magic involved here. These are all really low rated securities. Some would even call them toxic. And what this process did, what the CDO did, is converted. Let, let's let's just say for the sake of argument, let me let me get my pen out here. Um, let's just say this is all uh, 33%. So this is 33%. This is 33%. And this is 33% of the CDO. So 33% of the CDO are going to be the senior tranche, 33% of all of the uh, mortgage-backed securities are going to be mezzanine and 33 equity. What that means is they were, to, they were able to take all of these B-rated mortgage-backed securities and they convert 67% into investment-grade securities. The reason why, let me just erase this. The reason why is the credit agencies, Moody's, Fitch, Standard & Poor's, guess what they did? They actually gave these CDOs investment grade ratings. So 67% in this example of these toxic or rather low rated, B rated securities were converted into investment grade um, securities. That's the magic. And of course, um, because of these high credit ratings from the rating agencies, these were purchased by more people. Now, because they found a new market for these lower end uh, mortgage-backed securities, those equity tranches, they could now expand their banks could expand their lending to riskier um, borrowers the reason why is because the banks even if they made a risky loan they could sell that loan to the investment bank and the investment bank could convert it into a mortgage-backed security and then the the, the more risky part of the mortgage-backed security can be converted into a cdo and now the cdo has a higher credit rating and this is why a new type of, well, it wasn't really new, but a type of uh, lending class or loans called subprime and Alt-A started to grow in uh, popularity. Now, subprime and Alt-A loans are basically loans to made, made to borrowers who have the lowest credit rating. And they're risky, but th that risk from the bank was not lasting long because they would quickly sell it off to an investment bank. The investment bank didn't have to hold that risk for very long because they would package into a mortgage-backed security and the mortgage-backed security would then be packaged into a CDO. And as you can see from this graph, take a look at the red line right here. So this red line right here in 2002, roughly 10% 10% of new mortgages originated in 2002 were of the risky type, the subprime and Alt-A. But because of this new CDO process, um, they started to grow as a percentage of U.S. mortgages originated. And then by 2006, basically a year and a half before the financial crisis and the housing market went into crisis, roughly 33%, 33% was, uh, of all loans, were of subprime or Alt-A type. Now, take a look at the, the left axis right here. On the left axis, you've got $1 trillion right there, which meant that if uh, 33 percent of all loans in 2006 were of that 
variety and they totaled about one trillion dollars that meant the uh, total loans home loans made in 2006 was roughly three trillion dollars now this uh, riskier loans required maybe an additional level of safety to make them palatable to people. And one of the things that did that was insurance, or in other words, called credit default swaps. A credit default swap is an insurance policy on something like a CDO. So if you buy a CDO and you're afraid that the uh, company, the investment bank offering it is going to go belly up, that the CDO is going to go bust. You could buy a credit default swap, which is basically an insurance policy that would pay you if the asset uh, went bad. And as you could see in 2006, you started to see a big rise in credit default swaps, these insurance policies. But I want you to pay close attention to what is being measured on this vertical axis. This is in trillions of dollars. This is roughly $37 trillion. Now, I just got telling you, got through telling you on the uh, previous slide that the entire uh, mortgage value in 2006 was $3 trillion. How could the insurance on $3 trillion be a such a large factor above larger than the what is being insured and the crazy thing is you don't have to own the asset in this case the collateralized debt obligation the cdo in order to insure it the crazy thing about credit default swaps is anybody could buy a credit default swap on a cdo this the i mean the the analogy would be your home. If your home is worth a million dollars and you take out a million dollar insurance policy, fire insurance, and your home burns down, you will get paid a million dollars. But what if a thousand people bought a, a million dollar insurance policy on your home? That means if your home worth a million dollars burns down, it will pay off a billion dollars worth of policies. So one home, worth a million dollars, burns down, and a billion dollars is paid out. That's why you see this multiple here of $3 trillion worth of assets being insured up to $37 trillion. Um, and the other thing that's interesting is in 2007 and 2008, you could see this went up to well it went up to 60 trillion in 2007 and the first half of 2008 was almost that much so the first half of 2008 was on pace to be close to 110 to 120 trillion dollars in credit default swaps and that's that's what's that's basically in 2007 2008 that was speculation people were betting against the housing market at that time so people weren't buying credit default swaps to insure their asset, they were simply making a bet against the housing market. So hopefully this explains the difference between mortgage-backed securities and CDOs. A CDO is simply a uh, repackaged mortgage-backed security.